Alright y'all, this is Jen, and we're going to give her the floor, okay? Hi guys! Hey. So I was here maybe, what, 2018? It was a long time ago. Um, and I'm very excited to be here. I'm also extremely nervous, so I might um, be terrified today, but that is okay. Um, I think that there's a lot of people who think that because I have a big social media presence that I am like super pumped to talk in front of actual people. It's not true. <laughs> so um, I am really good at talking right into my phone and looking at my own face. So to look out and see other people is terrifying to me. Um, but I do see some people I know. I know Megan from a long, long time ago. She and I used to go to church together. So it's nice to have a couple familiar faces. So if you don't know who I am, um, my name is Jen Hamilton. Um, I am a nurse. I'm a labor and delivery nurse at Cone. Um, I am a mom of two. I have two boys. Um, eight years old is my is my oldest. His name is Ellis. And then my youngest, his name is Luke. Um, I am a wife to Brian. Um, he is also a nurse. And um, I do tiktok -y stuff. <laughs> so um, if you guys aren't on TikTok, it's kind of like a social media platform just with like little videos and stuff. Um, I have about 1.4 million followers on there, which is a lot of people. Um, and people often ask me like, Jen, how did you get that many people? Um, so I would just like to show you, this is a photo of me and my son. Um, as you can tell, I'm just really good at fashion. And this is my internet son that I use because my kids aren't as good looking. Um, so I, Wear like these graphic tees that show you like I'm not getting ready today. Um, just kidding. If you actually know me in real life, you know that this is actually me. So I will wear um, just what I wore the night before um, in all of my stuff. I'm really, really good at uh, getting followers, but just by looking like an unshowered trash can most every day. <laughs> um, and that's okay with me because there's literally no standard. Like the bar is on the ground because I have no um, like standard that I have to look up, live up to and be this perfect person online. So um, if you're gonna ask me though, like who am I? I would love to, for you to ask wiki famous people um, because their internet article of me is perfect. I would like to show you that they say that I am the TikTok star, model, Instagram star, I'm known for my beautiful looks, my cute smile, my modeling poses, and my amazing personality. Um, I am also, you'll soon, soon be seeing me in modeling shoots. Didn't know that, that was exciting to know. Um, and I'm five foot four inches tall and 54 kilograms, which if you're unfamiliar with the metric system, is 119 pounds, which is fantastic. Um, I have not been 119 pounds since I was in the fifth grade. So that was really exciting to find out. Um, so if you're wondering who I am, I just want you to remember that. <laughs> Nothing else is true except for that. Um, and I was asked to come here and talk to you guys today about self-love, self-acceptance, because it's something that I talk a lot about online. Um, but if you're anything like me, if you're struggling with loving yourself, and somebody comes to tell you how to love yourself, um, I would want to tell you to go choke on a cheese stick because that stuff is not easy to do. Um, and for me, I had a really big long journey with coming to self-love and self-acceptance. Um, so today, instead of talking to you about how to love yourself, um, I'm going to talk to you about who you are because it's very, very hard to love someone that you don't even know. And so in my journey of finding out who I was, um, I realized I had no clue. Um, and I have a lot of funny things to say online and everything, but I do have kind of like a, a story that's not so fun. Um, in 2019, it was the absolute worst year of my entire life. Um, a lot of people, for them, it was 2020 because coronavirus and everything. Yes, that sucked, but for me, 2019 was the absolute worst. Um, my husband, who I'd been married to since I was very young, for seven years, um, our marriage completely fell apart. So our time of, you know, being together and having dinners on the, at the table and having great, fun family times was replaced with attorneys and uh, 
lawyer bills and notaries and custody agreements. Um, and it completely broke me, not only as a woman, but as just a person. Because my whole identity was tied up in being Brian's wife, right? That's who I was, was Brian's wife. Um, and so when that title was taken away from me, I had nothing left. Like I felt like a shell of a person. There was nothing left in me of any worth or value. Um, and I was told by lots of my friends, you need to go to counseling. You need to go to counseling. <laughs> Please go to counseling. Um, and it's very hard if you've never been to counseling or if you have to be able to make that step from not being in counseling to being in counseling because there's a lot that goes into it. You have to look for a counselor. You have to call a counselor, which was probably the most nerve wracking part. And so I had done a lot of research and I'd found someone that I really felt comfortable with. It was like a husband and wife duo. And so I could talk about the marriage stuff, but I could also talk about like my personal struggles. And so I called the man and I was like, hey, I would like to get into counseling. I kind of gave him like a Cliff, Cliff Notes version of what was going on. And um, he's like, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for trusting us. Um, I have this student that I would like you to see. Um, she's working under me and she's learning how to be a counselor. And my heart fell into my uterus, which just fell out of my butthole because I was not ready, first of all, to share anything about my personal life. And then with somebody who's learning, like that sounds terrible. Um, so, but ever the people pleaser, I said, that sounds great. <laughs> it is literally the best news I've heard all day. I cannot wait to meet her. Um, and so I'm driving to counseling for the first time and I'm just about as nervous as I am standing here right now. And I get in there and I start kind of verbal vomit what's going on and rather asking like, pointed questions about the situation. Shamika looks at me and she asks me, who are you? And I was very confused because that question seemed so specific yet so vague. And if you're trying to learn something about someone, that's not a question that you ask. You ask, do you have kids? What do you do for a living? Are you married? Those kind of questions to get to learn more about somebody. Um, so I answered her in the only way that I knew how, and that was just how I introduced myself today. And I said, okay, um, I think I'm a good wife. Um, I think I'm a good nurse and I think I'm a good mom. And she cut me off and she said, no, that's not what I asked you. First of all, I don't want to know who you think you are. I want to know who you are. And I don't want to know who you are to other people. I want to know who you are to you. And as a girl, we're taught to be humble and sweet and not too much of anything, kind of be small. And so I wasn't even confident enough to say, I am. I started with, I think I am. I didn't know. And I didn't want to be, I didn't want to come off as a brat. Right, as we would if we were if we were growing up and our parents heard us say something that we were really, really strong about, you just wanna to tone it down a little bit. And so whenever she completely annihilated my whole sense of self by stripping off every single label that I had, my sense of self had imploded because my identity was totally wrapped up and built upon the roles and responsibilities that I had with other people. And I realized that not only was I not knowing who I was, I was kind of like, just like an acquaintance with myself. I knew about me enough to be able to describe me, but I didn't know who I was at all. So in trying to figure all of this out, I figured out that kind of the symptoms of being in an acquaintance relationship with yourself would be the first thing would be kind of negative self-talk or a lack of compassion for yourself. Because if you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off, the immediate response is, what a freaking moron. They are the worst. They intentionally wanted to make me have a bad day. And if you're going down the road and you see your friend and your friend cuts you off, it's like, haha, she must be having a bad day. 
because we know that person and we know that we can assume the best intent with them because they care about us, right? So anytime that we try to motivate ourselves with shame, so saying things like, um, one thing that I would do if I was trying to lose weight, I would look at myself in the mirror and say, you fat cow, thinking that, that was gonna help me to not eat the next day or to work out better. Um, but motivating yourself, yourself with shame is a great way of knowing. I don't really know myself that great. Um, number two, if you have a really hard time with downtime with yourself, um, not knowing what to do, if you'd rather scroll your phone um, when you're alone or if you'd rather just watch TV or take a nap, it's avoiding awkward times with yourself. Um, it's kind of like watching a date and they're both people are on their phone. Like, don't you want to spend time together? Because um, I know that I would rather just sit on my phone and scroll because it's the easiest way to hang out with yourself. Um, number three, if your identity is tied to someone else. So if your whole identity is wrapped up in being a mom and being a wife um, and being whatever job you do, um, you probably don't know yourself that great. Um, and number four, if you feel that in order to like yourself or to come to a place of self-acceptance or body acceptance um, or body love that you feel like you have to be a certain size, a certain way, if you had to fix something about yourself, then that would be a way of knowing that you probably don't know yourself that great. Um, if you are trying to get someone to uh, recognize a person that you're talking about and it's an acquaintance, you say like, hey, you know that girl, she's an ICU nurse, she's married to that firefighter, she's got three kids and she's got a big old gap between her teeth. Those are all descriptors of somebody that you don't know that great, but you're trying to get somebody to, to know. So that's a way that you would know, mm, I probably don't know myself. So I ended up having this like one third life crisis where I was determined to get to know myself, um, but I had to restructure my priorities. And as a mom, this is probably what your life looks like literally everyone else above yourself. And that's so admirable and so great um, that we literally know everyone else's needs more than our own. But if this is the way that your life is structured, you are cheating the ones you love the most out of the very, very best of you. So I took the next year of my life and I devoted it to flipping this upside down to put me <laughs> above everyone else. And I know that sounds so, so selfish, but this is the only way to find out who you truly are. Um, so after this counseling session, here I am, the shell of a person um, who's completely emptied herself of every single identifying feature, but I was so, so desperate to figure it out. So I literally sat down and tried to figure out what is the formula? Like how in the world am I a person? Like what am I made up of? And what I figured out, was that we are made up of our personality, our preferences, our perspective, and our passion, work, which worked out super great because they all start with P's and this is a presentation. So it works out super, super fantastic. So your personality are things like what other people see when they meet you. How do you manage your emotions? What are your underlying motivations for what you do? Your preferences would be things like what you like or what you don't like or what you like to do in your free time. Your perspective would be your spiritual worldview, um, your personal view of how you and others fit into the world and into society. These are your core beliefs. And then your passion, this is what makes you get up in the morning, what you contribute to the world, and what um, you, the mark that you leave on the world. So personality for me was the most aloof but also the easiest to figure out um, like I said before if we don't know someone it's harder for us to assume the best intent and what I found is that we don't give ourselves the compassion the empathy or the credit for the trauma or the hardships that we've endured um, my counselor helps me to figure out something called the Enneagram some of you may have heard of it some of you may have not it's a nine there's nine different personality numbers um, it's not a pentagram People think it's the devil sometimes if they've never heard of it before, and I promise it is not. Um, but it is a personality test that doesn't tell you what you do. It tells you why that you do the things that you do. So sometimes we'll, we'll do something and we're like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I act that way? 
Um, and so the Enneagram kind of gives you a insight into your own psyche and how you work. Um, and the way that I like to explain it is that every single person has different colored glasses on. So we can look at the same situation and all come to different conclusions because we don't see it exactly the same way. Um, so like I said, there's nine different types. Um, I personally am a type two, which is kind of like the helper um, is what it's called. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what my personality type is. This is going to feel like I'm taking off all my clothes in front of you because it is very revealing. Um, but I think it's important to kind of show you the things that this tells you about yourself. So the primary perspective of a type two is that you don't believe lo others love you unconditionally simply for who you, who you are. You feel you must win the approval of others by feeling their emotions and fulfilling their needs. You project the image of being a completely selfless, loving, and supportive person in order to earn the approval and affirmation of others. Ouch. You are convinced others will consider your recognizing and taking care of your own needs, emotional, relational, or physical, as selfish and reject you. You hide your needs from yourself and others and focus strictly on others' needs. So I felt so seen and so heard and yet so enlightened, like, yes, this makes sense to me. Um, the last thing that I saw was that, and I'm going to write this on the board here. Use the orange one, that one doesn't work well. Good to know. <laughs> so it says, you take a genuine interest in others. You support anyone in need. Um, through acts of service. So those were nice things, right? That's great. I, have, I take a genuine interest in others. I support other people in need. And so now I have something that I know about myself. We figured that out. So now that I know my motivations, I need to know what I want. What do I want? And this was one of the scariest parts of this whole journey was that I was 30 years old and had no clue what I wanted. Um, I could give you a full 20 page dissertation on literally anyone else in my family. Um, I could create heaven for my family. Uh, I could know exactly what they would want to eat, exactly what they would want to fill their time with, exactly what they would want their rooms in heaven to look like. But I could not write you a single sentence about myself. Um, and if you ever think that you don't do this, if your husband asks you what you want for dinner, that's a perfect example. Um, because we never know until we hear it. Um, and also, like last week, I told my husband, I need to go to Target for face masks. Um, that was a ruse. I did not need that. I just needed Target to tell me what I needed because <laughs> that is what Target is for. So I went to Target and I left Target without the face mask, but with these gray jeans. So, <laughs> um, but we do that because it's, it's exciting to learn more about ourselves. We go to Target, we get excited whenever we see something that we like. Um, and so I started paying attention to the things that excited me. Um, I took opportunities to date myself. Um, I took opportunities to try new things, um, try new hobbies and also fail. I learned that I hated to crochet. It was not my thing. It was way too long and I was not this like instant gratification that I needed. Um, but I also loved to um, learn about organization and them. Am I great at it? Not at all. Um, but I learned that I liked being in a peaceful environment even though I'm not so great at it. Um, I learned that my anxiety and depression was lower if I had something to look forward to or spent time moving my body outside. Um, I wasn't like twerking in my front yard or anything, but you know, I was outside with my family. Um, I learned that I love to make not so pretty things pretty. So I would pick up like uh, trash furniture on the side of the road and I would come home and sand it down and paint it and sell it. And I had a super fun time doing that. Um, so some things that I learned about myself then would be that, let me write some of these down. Um, I enjoy being productive. Um, 
Um, it's easier to do when I am in an organized environment. And also, um, I like Mexican food. I figured that out. Anytime, anywhere, Mexican food is my jam. Um, so then we come to your passion. So when you intersect, oh wait, they might have lost one. Oh, one more. Okay, so with your perspective, so this is your core beliefs, your spiritual beliefs, um, what you believe about yourself, the world, um, and how you fit into it. And I know not everybody believes the same as me, um, and I'm not here to try to get anybody to do anything, but I'm just going to share my own uh, personal journey with faith. Um, I feel like since we're in a church, we kind of all kind of might believe the same thing, but I can't assume that. Um, so this is what is your worldview and not what you were told to believe. Um, I grew up super conservative, evangelical. Um, my parents were the kind of people who told me um, if you had mental health issues, that was a prayer life issue. Um, I had a lot of purity culture stuff that happened. Um, you know, I was responsible for the men and how they reacted to me, making sure that I've covered up everything. Um, you know, you don't really put yourself around people that don't believe this, the same as you because they might taint you. Um, I was a Christian and believed in Jesus because we were Christian and we believed in Jesus. Um, but if you ask me why, I had no personal experience with why that was real to me. Um, I grew up a really good girl. Um, I was a virgin all the way up until I was 21 years old. Um, I went to a very conservative Christian college where if you have extracurricular premarital activities, you get kicked out. And uh, the very first time that I had extracurricular activities with my now husband, I got pregnant. Um, and so I spent my whole life doing good, being perfect, um, in the eyes of you know, my family and church. Um, I never partied, I never did drugs, I never smoked, but the time that I did one thing that was wrong, it became obvious to everyone else. And I was cut off from a lot of people at my school. Um, I found out that I was pregnant two weeks before I graduated, so I did keep my mouth shut and I did not get kicked out of school. Um, but I had this really big religious trauma that happened to me because I was like, G would Jesus love me through this? Because my friends were saying things like, how dare you? We thought you were different. Um, I can't believe you did this. Um, I'll never look at you the same. So even though I was sinning, I sinned differently than them, they still saw me as wrong or as someone who was not to be redeemed. Um, so after that, I kind of had this really jaded view of church, of Jesus, of God, of how I fit into all that. Um, and so during this whole process of trying to figure out what I believed, I didn't know. I didn't know if that was real to me. I didn't know if God actually cared about me. Um, because everything in my life at that point was falling apart. So what? why did I believe that God wanted anything to do with causing me to have good things? Um, so rather than, I guess, turning away completely, what I did was I started pursuing Jesus to see if Jesus would pursue me. Um, I started a journal of just my skeptical thoughts of everything, and it soon turned into a journal of proof for me um, because I started noticing that as I was paying attention to Jesus, that Jesus was paying attention to me. Um, and I would have this journal of, I call them God weeks, of things that could not have happened the way that they did unless I felt that someone was paying attention to me. Um, and I spent my whole life believing someone else's faith um, for them and so for the first time, it was finally real to me. Um, and finding faith was, that was personally mine was a huge pivotal moment in my journey because I finally felt like I was a part of something bigger and things weren't happening to me, they were happening for me. 
Um, and so through this, I found that I am loved and cared for. By God. Who has a purpose for my life. So I now had a sense of purpose. I now knew who I was with my personality. And when you intersect your personality, your preferences, and your perspective, that's where you find your passion. Um, your passion is something that contributes to the world. It brings you the most joy. Um, and I believe that everyone has a passion and a purpose, but we get so caught up in trying to help our kids fulfill and cultivate their own passions that we forget that we're allowed to have those too. And we're supposed to have those. And so your passion and your purpose can definitely be revolving around your kids, but it can't just be all your kids and not you. Because your purpose cannot be your kids because eventually they grow up and they move on and we're still left with us. So for me, I kind of accidentally found um, my passion project and I kind of believe that God kind of puts it in your lap when you're ready. Um, for me, I was a part of, and probably some of you are a part of Trad Stay at Home Moms page on Facebook. Um, and there was a mom on there who had posted about how she had um, like postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. She wanted a cleaning company recommendation. She said that she could not afford it, but she also could not live this way anymore. Um, and so there were people who were commenting, oh, use this cleaning company, try this cleaning company. And I was like, is no one seeing this woman's pain? Is no one figuring out that she needs help? She doesn't just need somebody to come clean her house. She needs people around her. So I made a post saying like, can't we just all get together and just go help her and go clean and be with her? And um, there were so many people that jumped on board and I made a TikTok about it. And so from that moment, this is only like two months ago, there's now like 120 something chapters across the United States, Canada, Australia. Um, we call it Hot Mess Express because we're all a hot mess and we all need people to come into our lives because I wish that someone was there for me whenever I had my little kids and you know didn't have someone to help me clean or help me be, just be a friend. Um, and at our last Hot Mess Express, um, thing that we did we um were at walmart buying this woman some uh like storage stuff she lived in a single wide trailer so we were trying to find some storage options for her um that would work in her in her situation and while we were there there was a man that came up to me and he just started talking to me for no reason i did not talk to him um beforehand he just came up and started asking me what we were doing and I, um, I started explaining, and he explained that he had started something similar for veterans, and that you know veterans have a lot of PTSD and depression, and that they are never ones that will go and ask for help. They have to be kind of offered help or plucked out of their situation. And he looked at me and he said, you know what, you and me, we're pluckers. I was like, pluckers? He said, we go in and we pluck people out of overwhelming situations. And I was like, that is so fantastic. And I added that to my list. And if somebody just looked at I'm a plucker, they would have no idea what I was saying. <laughs> but it makes sense to me. So I like to pluck people out of overwhelming situations. And that is something that I recognize. So... Who am I? So now that I know my passions, my perspective, my preferences, and my personality, um, I kind of start back around to the beginning, and I tell you, okay, I'm a nurse, I'm a mom, 
I'm a wife, but that's not all I am. I take genuine interest in others. I support anyone in need through acts of service. I enjoy being productive. I enjoy being organized. I am loved and cared for by a God who has a purpose for my life. And I'm a plucker of people out of overwhelming situations. And so now I have a whole list of self-affirmations. And you're probably like, yeah, that's great. That doesn't help me love myself. You're right. But it does set your feet firmly on the path of being able to not only accept yourself, but eventually love yourself. So all of these are the things that I wake up in the morning and tell myself every day. Look right in my eyeballs in the mirror and tell myself every single day. Because eventually, you start to believe it. So self-affirmations self-affirma- is the act of affirming one's own worthiness and value as an individual. Um, and whenever you struggle with self-acceptance and self-love, it's really hard to believe anything good that anyone says about you. We're the kind of people that say, you know, if somebody comes up to you and say, you know what, you look really good today. And you say, no, 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 no. No, I woke up like this. Or I got this shirt out of the laundry basket. We try to explain why what they're saying is, is not true. Rather than affirming and saying, you know what, I do look good today. Thank you very much. Um, so self-affirmations are a way that you daily speak truth and life into your spirit. So I say all that to say, once you figure out who you are, then you can start to go on a journey of accepting yourself and loving yourself. The end. (laughs) So if you guys have any questions about um, not just this, but uh, TikTok, Instagram, um, anything, I will be here if you need me to answer any questions.